Welcome back. All right, quick news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet. It is Sunday, January the 14th, where I am. It may not be where you are when you watch this, uh, but I wanted to talk about this. It's a feel-good story, and I love feel-good stories in hockey, so here we are. Uh, the Newfoundland Growlers, short on players, and so they call up 47-year-old Terry Ryan. Apparently, he was out having a few drinks last night, and he's like, sure. Uh, former first-round draft pick of the Montreal Canadiens, Terry Ryan, known for dropping the gloves and now he's actually kind of better known i think as the fact that he plays hitch on shorzy so he goes out there looking very much like hitch and he dropped the gloves tonight so good on terry ryan what a great story uh it, it, really terry ryan's a great story i'm i i love the show shorzy as well so i'm really glad to see that uh, that he gave it a shot and again at 47 years of age so nice to see and uh, I think my favorite part was as he's dropping the gloves, you see another player on the opposing team just doing this, like, nope, nope. So, yeah, uh, good on Terry Ryan. He's a good one. And, yeah, kudos to him for the for the fight. And um, maybe we'll see him playing for the Growlers again. It was just, it was a matter of there just weren't, they, they needed players desperately, and he knows how to play. So there you go. Get the whole Shorzy crew together. Get Diaby on the on the blue line too while you're at it anyways uh yeah so i just i i wanted i wanted to mention that tonight uh could this have waited for tomorrow maybe but tomorrow's a full day of hockey again so i kind of feel like you know tomorrow i might be kind of challenged to find the time for the news videos i'd like to do uh that being said moving on to other news uh patera and this is still undisclosed both patera and eichel this is undisclosed on what their injuries are which is always a bit eyebrow raising so eichel's been placed on ir uh, Patera is not available tomorrow. He could be ready for Thursday. So what that means is Logan Thompson, the starter tomorrow, Logan Thompson, probably the starter on Thursday. It means that Savelle stays up. Uh, the one piece of information that's not on the board is what's going on with Aiden Hill. Uh, I was looking around to see if there's been any updates on Hill. I can't find anything. So a lot of un unknowns when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights and their current situation with players being healthy or not, un not healthy. Uh, but Eichel's out, Patera, Hill, uh, there are various other Gold Knights. Uh, uh, Theodore really stands out as one they're missing, and Vegas is trending in the wrong direction right now. So, yeah, we, we'll see how things go uh, for the Vegas Golden Knights from here, but uh, definitely definitely some issues with players staying healthy. It's feeling a lot like it did a couple years ago. Uh, so Mitch Marner tonight against Detroit reached 600 points. And he did so in 548 games. That is the fastest that any Toronto Maple Leaf has ever reached 600 games. Uh, he bested Daryl Sittler's record. Sittler's record was getting to 600 points in 584 games. And uh, yeah, so kudos to Mitch Marner for that. Um, it, it also coming out of tonight's game, uh, Craig Berube was trending. And I was like, why is Craig Berube trending? And I click on it, I'm like, oh, it's Leafs fans. So there seems to be a belief among some Leafs fans, at least on the formerly known as Twitter, uh, that Craig Berube is the coach that they need. And so this is how this works. The Leafs are winning. Things are great. And as soon as they start losing, well, how do, how do we get Sheldon Keefe out and move somebody else in? Uh, I, I don't think we're going to see a change in the coach behind the Leafs bench. Notice I'm saying I don't, I don't think so. But the fact that Kyle Dubas is no longer the GM in Toronto means there is always that chance that Brad Tree Living could say, well, I like Keefe, but, you know, there's this other guy I want to hire, like, and and who knows, maybe Berube would, would work. So uh, there are a lot of coaches right now that are out of work that I think are pretty darn good coaches. There are also some very good coaches who are assistant coaches right now in the NHL. So it will be interesting to see if Toronto does trend in the wrong direction much longer. How long do you wait? How long do you wait before you make a change behind the bench? Um, I, I always, I've been saying for the last three years, it feels like if, you know, if the Leafs lose again early in the playoffs, man, this could really get blown up. And it hasn't been. So I don't know that it's necessarily going to be this year either, but uh, we shall see. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think the issue is for the Leafs in, in tonight's game, last night's game? Just not able to hold leads. Uh, Vancouver news. So to get out of Buffalo, Buffalo going through a nasty winter storm. As winter has just gripped North America for the most part. If you're in a warm part of North America, a lot of North America doesn't like you right now. Uh, but at any rate, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm sure you're delightful. But uh, the, the Canucks couldn't fly out of Buffalo. So they had to take a bus out of Buffalo and fly out of Toronto 
in order to get to Columbus. So that's a bit of a go around. Uh, and the game between they and the Columbus Blue Jackets is a matinee game tomorrow. And interestingly enough, they've confirmed that Merz Leakins is going to be starting for Columbus, which is odd because it felt like Tarasov and Martin were going to be the two goalies and Elvis has been a healthy scratch here and there, but he's going to start tomorrow against Vancouver. So maybe they're playing a hunch. We'll find out tomorrow. I'll be doing that preview tonight. It'll it'll go live on the channel tomorrow morning. But uh, yeah, so teams having to kind of go around this and we'll see what this does to the schedule upcoming. All the winter storms, we do see games get postponed and moved around in the NHL and various other leagues too. I know the PWHL, I think they moved a game last week. So it's been happening there. I also wanted to say too, it's not on the board, but the PWHL through their first 10 games, averaging about 5,000 fans, which is which is great. That's great for a startup league, uh, first year and everything. So kudos to the PWHL. Uh, for, for filling up the buildings that they have uh, as, as often as they have. And we'll see where the growth goes from there. Really, the, the interesting part for me with the PWHL is going to be, this is the inaugural season, there's going to be that excitement. And then it's a matter of keeping it and a matter of, of making it grow as well. And that's where I think the challenge comes in is you know selling people on this idea of okay now this is this is a league it's sticking around and you know year after year after year that support it'll be interesting to see where it trends but right now pwhl definitely trending in the right direction especially considering how busy the nhl has been so they're still managing to sell tickets as well and all the best to them in their endeavors let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.